Hey, what's going on, guys? It is 2.32 a.m. Eastern Time on July 31st. It's probably well over a month since the game actually ended. <laughs> so, uh, sorry that I'm now uh, finally filming these final turns that were provided to me by other players in the game. And I know there were some comments in the last video, Episode 9, um, people asking about the end of the game. So I do apologize. Uh, I, I intended to get this up uh, quite a bit ago, actually, but I had to make kind of a trip to Ohio unexpectedly, and I was out of, uh, out of my, uh, home area for well over a week, so, uh, with that said, I have just a couple turns, nothing too big. This one right here is Marinon, uh, who provided what's to show here at the Ivory Keep a large battle with Agartha, and I did watch this a long time ago, and I don't particularly recall how it works out. So let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, over here in Marinon, we have these uh, Harbingers, which I've heard are really awesome, and I've never actually seen them. So they come out with air magic. They're sacred, awe five, invulnerable, uh, various resistances, and they're flyers. So that's pretty awesome. No equipment on that unit, which is kind of interesting. So I'm not sure what he'll be doing with that. And a boatload of crossbows. You can see the flaming arrows coming up on the side of Marinon, over here with Agartha. Interestingly enough, Hoplites. So I'm curious how he got those. Um, I think this is an attack into Agartha's province, so maybe it's province defense, I don't know for certain. Uh, flame, or Magma Children, I should say. And of course, the Sentinels. Now, I do briefly want to talk about uh, some comments in chat that... Oh, and that's another thing that I haven't... I have not been responding to comments, and I'm sorry for that. I'll, I'll look to... Um, answer those, you know, here in the next day or so. But, um, some co Oh my god, look at that volley. Wow. <laughs> I'll have to check and see how many crossbows there are. That's pretty nuts. They did hit those units in the front, He's, which I'm sure uh, Agartha planned on trying to avoid as many arrows as he could with his uh, tougher units. He's got his defenders of the hall in front of the umbrals and the sentinels. But, uh, some comments that I was complaining about uh, the Sentinels and things like that from Agartha. Uh, and, and to be honest, you know, I'm sure there are counters of these units and things like that. And I just don't know them. Um, and there we got a pillar of fire coming down. And interestingly enough, hitting the back line. Uh, not targeting any of the Sentinels or anything like that. I'm not sure how that works with the targeting. That is nasty though. There are a lot of them. Um, but... I, I wasn't really complaining about the unit itself, or I wasn't trying to complain. Maybe it came off that way. Uh, keep in mind that I, um, you know, filmed about a, a turn per day. So I, one thing I found hard about this uh, this series is um, not repeating myself because uh, there is only one turn per day. So I think that, it, you know, after a day had passed, I kind of forgot what I had talked about the previous day. So I'm sure I overlapped a lot of the things I was saying about, you know, unit stats and things like that. There's a unit routing over there on the back on Agartha's line. The Pillar of Fire coming down once again. Yeah, that is the Oracle of Ancients retreating off the battlefield. Uh, here comes a Fireball. First Fireball of the match. I'm sure we'll see several of those once their fatigue starts coming down. But, um... Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean to uh, sound bitter about the units or anything like that. I think that uh, there are various weaknesses for them that have been talked about in chat as well. I do believe that, for example, the Sentinels are... are you only get one per turn, and I do believe there are, one, there are two or three Earth Gems per cast. And uh, Agartha's forces here are significantly diminished already, but they do have the core together. So there's another volley. Wow, they even that even hurt the magma children. I, I thought that would be almost totally ineffective there. Um, so they do, you know, they they cost a couple gems. I think the cost is good, but you got to look at that also that their uh, units routing there. Um, that it does take a lot of mage turns to amass the kind of sentinels that Agartha has done here. So um, you know, I'm sure that's something that can be taken advantage of as well. And I think in retrospect, uh, to what I had done in this game, you know, I thought uh, looking at that type of unit that a spell like Opposition or Control would be ideal because it targets magic beings, and especially with Control, it would turn it against its owner, which is nice. Um, I don't think those are the route here because of the high magic resistance. 
Uh, and from what people were saying is I should have went with heavy evocations, and I think that uh, Gift of Gift of Heavens would specifically be really good against the Sentinels. I don't think from... I, I can't remember who said it. I apologize. I think maybe it was Sam T. Not certain. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't know if I agree. Of course, we're here we're seeing Pillar of Fire working pretty well. But I don't know if I would agree that the uh, falling fires and fireballs would have worked. I don't. I didn't have the kind of mage force that Marinon has here. That looks like there's at least twenty some witch hunters. If I had to guess, I believe these are witch hunters. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have that kind of volley available. I don't. I don't think. And a lot of my mages were water as opposed to fire. I got very few fire twos. And I don't think any of the earth spells would have worked against sentinels. So that would, you know, to me, I, I fire might have worked. But with how little I had, even with communions, I don't think I had the kind of uh, options that would have landed enough damage in an area to overcome the, the uh, regen ability that was on sentinels due to their sacred abilities. Uh, Agartha's forces are a, a really mess here. I'm, I'm, look at the damn battlefield. It's entirely on fire over here. So Pillar of Fire, obviously, very good, but I don't know if Falling Fires and Fireballs would have gotten it done. Could be wrong, guys. I didn't get to try it, so I could be wrong. Uh, I did test it in a battle um, uh, while the game was going on, and I didn't see it working out. So that's kind of why I, I focused on control. There is a blade wind coming in and not doing a whole lot of damage. It did target the right units. It wouldn't have done much against those frontline units. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. I, it looks to me like Agartha's units, uh, there they go, routing a little bit. So I'm not sure what the few sentinels left can do. The pillar of fire definitely working very well though. So that's, I didn't get that far. Oh, Pike and Ears routing. Interestingly enough, I don't know what caused it. Uh, they got into melee with those sentinels, those broken ass sentinels. <laughs> uh, just kidding, of course, but uh, they routed immediately, so that's kind of odd. I don't know. So, Agartha got a, it's still got a handful of units, uh, significantly better fighting units in melee if they can get there. Um, Marinon with archers and crossbows and their mages are running out of fatigue as you can see the fire darts coming in ethereal being cast uh, fireflies smite so we're not seeing those big spells like we did at the beginning of the battle the harbinger which i i didn't see it what it was doing there's a mist form an air shield i don't know if it was casting any thunder strike or anything like that which was another recommended spell okay now we're seeing some incinerate and conflagration and you got those sentinels out front they're regening six damage per turn that's that's kind of what i was saying trying to make the point that you know when you're dropping falling fires on there and and to me falling fires wasn't doing that much damage but let's say it comes down and it hits for i don't know 15 damage which i think would would be an extraordinary amount of damage for the spell uh, at least from what i remember testing but you know, now you got them regening four to six damage per turn, and you might not have the same area struck by those spells. Uh, again, here we have a boatload of witch hunters, which I think is why we saw. And uh, the Sentinels are in melee, by the way. We're getting there. Um, so, uh, I, to me, it really, what it comes down to is the volley, the amount of spells that you have available to, you know, throw down the battlefield, and I just did not have it. So, uh, I don't know. That's my take, at least. Just a, just a matter, you know, I, I got, um... There was an Orb Lightning. From that Harbinger. I thought Orb Lightning was a very small range spell, and now we're seeing uh, some short range fire spells that did some good damage. But a lot of Marinon's units have routed, and the um, Sentinels are closing the gap, along with those Shard Guards, so... Uh, smart setup, of course, by by Horrifying Thoughts, the Agartha player, to... Uh, you can see he got those Shard Guards almost to melee by putting them behind the Sentinels, so... Uh, they have now routed, unfortunately for him. Um, and that just leaves the Sentinels. Those crossbows are... Just nasty, God Almighty! I, and the interesting thing was, 
and I see now, you'll see when we get to the battlefield, the actual map, that um, Marinon was just monstrous. And, and I think I said that a few times. Uh, Agartha is entirely routed here. So, well fought. It, you can see he did return. Uh, many of Marinon's units uh, went into route, but those crossbows, good god, uh, which are, appear to be out of ammo now, <laughs> are charging into melee into the uh, routing units. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, damages here. So 298 Agarthans lost their lives. Not a lot of casters, so I'm interested. Uh, he did have eight Oracle of the Ancients. I'm surprised he even had this many of them. These are the slow to recruit units. I kind of thought um, that Agartha was massing golem, golem crafters as kind of the core researcher and also the core mage. You know, Earth 2 gets you some, some buff spells, and I think with Fire 1 there you can cast Magma Eruption? I think that I think I got the right spell there. I could be wrong on that one, but a lot of Agarthans passing away. Only 97 out of the 415 Marinon. Of course, he'd have that nightmare of, of recovering all those retreated units. 234 crossbowmen. Wow, that is quite a bit. Let's take a look at the map here. I'll show you what I was talking about. Look how big Marinon was. Good lord. I mean, they had all of the western side of Pangaea. And, of course, um, over here at the Ivory Keep is what we just watched. So, I was trying to pull Marinon into this battle against Agartha, thinking that Agartha was the main threat. And, of course, in my part of the world, Agartha was the main threat. But look at Marinon's land. You know, when you see that, uh, Dominions, basically what it comes down to is land and territory, just like any other 4X game. So, I think when... You look at my uh, land over here, which was basically from Forgos Fell up to here for the bulk of the game. There wasn't much way I could compete with something like that where, you know, uh, just the sheer number of witch hunters he had was impressive. Um, but what I was thinking was if I could get through Agartha, I felt uh, uniquely positioned to fight against Marinon because I knew... It would be a lot of fire evocations, and I knew there would be a lot of crossbows with flaming arrows. And I had that air that uh, air pretender that you know could throw up things like um... oh god, guys, I can't remember the name. It's two thirty in the morning. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever the windshield spell is, the mass windshield. I don't. I can't remember it right now. Can't believe I can't remember it. But you know what I'm talking about. So I thought that I had a pretty decent position to you know fight against him had I gotten that far. So that's it for this turn. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the last uh, last turn that was provided to me here in the next minute or so. So there it is, guys. The true god has ascended. Dumen, the personification of strength, the fountainhead of order, the rock, the most electrifying great ruler of Marinon, has led his people to victory. In all the temples of the world, hymns are sung to doom and glory, offerings made to the great god of all. This world is now at peace. One being rules supreme that has banished the false pretenders to places of darkness and eternal suffering. I don't think I've ever actually read that. Uh, anyway, so as you can see, Marinon has won the game with a throne victory. And here's the final map. So you can see Agartha was pretty monstrous. Okay, all the way, all of my land. Um, lost some of their own land. I do believe up to here was his original position. These two right here. And then quite a bit of Satissa's land as well. Pangea pushing in, actually. So doing pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy for that. I, I think I could be wrong on this. Ribby, correct me uh, if I am wrong. But I do believe this might have been your first multiplayer game. Not entirely certain. So happy to see you do well there. The other one that I thought was uh, pretty surprising, T and Chi, wasn't wasn't really sure what kind of player you were as well, but um, held off for quite a long time. I didn't realize that Marinon had pushed into your land. I know that you were fighting Abyssia uh, for a while there, uh, because I was speaking to Josie, who was the Abyssia player a little bit. You know, we were so far apart that we kind of discussed our our positions a few times. So T and Chi doing well. Also, I'm not sure if that was a first time or not. Um, Relier dropping out of the game uh, some point in. I'm not sure why that happened. And that's pretty much all of the players, but Marinon definitely dominating. Uh, I think a quiet 
um, a quiet game by Marinon. I hardly heard from him at all throughout the game. I know that he worked a little bit with Agartha at the beginning to fight Satis, uh, who was also a new player as well. The Satisian player uh, had never played in a multiplayer game like this either, as far as I know. So, uh, with that said, just very briefly, look, oh, I still got some land right there. Okay, I'm still there, guys. Uh, my Dominion, though, destroyed, unfortunately. Uh, so, I'm going to briefly just talk about what I, where I think things went awry for me. First off, I, I think this was a, a really bad map for a multiplayer game. I, it's funny because when I first started the game, I wanted to, I knew this map well. I had done two Let's Plays on this already. And I had planned on doing some kind of Water Nation or having a Cold Dominion to account for these rivers that are all over the place. So I failed in that regard, setting that up. Uh, I, I, and when I picked Arcocephaly, I wasn't really thrilled about the selection. I, I wanted to play Vanheim. I really like Vanheim, but I didn't feel confident in my ability to balance their the way their mages are set up. You know, they have like a van. If I recall correctly, the Vanadrot and the uh, Dwarven Mage or something like that in the Middle Age as well. They're both slow to recruit, and they kind of form the core of Vanheim's casters. So I wasn't really confident in my ability to use that nation. I, I think they're kind of like a sort of like a one-trick pony or maybe two tricks. But um, I thought they were a little too complex for me at this point. I felt like Arcocephaly is a very baseline nation. And I, my whole goal, I know I said this before, was to have a massive expansion phase kind of supported by the elephants. And if you recall from the very beginning when I got, well, first off, starting here, you know, I had a throne province I could have moved into, which in retrospect, I would have just sent my scout into it very beginning of the game boom just charge in there get an idea of what's in there because if i had checked it on turn one i could have went in on turn two there wasn't much there so i could have went there and then moved in this direction uh these are great choke points against satis and against agartha or even if i moved up to this province uh though that would have been on you know not ideal because it would have been either move forward into satis's land or turn back and lose a turn and that's what happened to me in the beginning of the game a lot was I moved and then I had to retreat back into the province that I had just come from. So, you know, I couldn't move into this province, Mount Cargod, Cargod, because if I moved there, I would have had to come back to my capital. That's a turn I'm losing in the beginning of the game. And I personally, when I'm playing against the AI, I try to aim for about 12 provinces at the end of the first year. So that gives you about one per turn. And any more than that, to me, is gravy. So, you know, that that's kind of my personal goal of expansion. And I felt it with Arcocephaly that if I didn't have more than 12 at the beginning of the first year, then I was doing very poorly. And I had way under 12. I mean, it was the worst expansion we've ever seen on my channel, uh, if I had to guess. So, you know, I came down here and I ran into this province, the Deadland, and, and of course, boom, there are barbarians. And I thought... Damn it, I don't I can't lose my starting army to a huge force of barbarians. The report was showing a large force, and I ended up turning back. So, you know, I think at that time I scouted the throne, saw I could take it, and I went up there. Really logistically, I screwed myself. That was the biggest thing. It wasn't my lack of units, it wasn't my research paths. I know a lot of uh, comments were that I should have went straight evocations, and I think I do agree with that at this point that I did do a poor job of, of choosing research options, but that's not the reason I did so poorly in this game. It was the logistics. I mean, I, I you know, I had one, one route that I could travel, and I went back and forth a lot. So we saw that Satis and Agartha had that army, that or that war where, you know, uh, oh, there we go. Huh. I... Anyway, uh, Agartha went up into Satis, all the way to here, I think. Then Satis crushed them and pushed all the way down to almost to the capital. I think got, I think got beat on the capital. So when Agartha went up, I came up to support Satis, and I was working with Satis at that time. To be quite honest, um, a close personal friend of mine was playing Satis. It was uh, kind of unfortunate to me that we ended up being next to each other or so close. 
And, uh, you know, I wasn't really planning on allying with him, but we both knew that Agartha was a very good player. And also that Agartha w had his eyes set on Satissa's land. Uh, I think Agartha actually told me that in a few comments at the very beginning of the game. So, you know, it just happened that we wor were able to work together. I knew I was safe from Satis, that Agartha was a problem, and that Pangea might have been a problem. Uh, but, you know, basically everybody in my area was allied against Agartha, and I just didn't have the the setups, the logistics. I, I Either I didn't think it through, or I was too crippled by the way the map is designed. Um, I don't want to say that... I don't want to blame it on the map because everybody in the game obviously had to deal with the, the way the map is designed. And I do love this map. I think it's not great for it, for a multiplayer game. But, um, you know, Agartha, for example, has a lot of amphibious units. And that is great on this map. You can cross all of these rivers. Look how many rivers there are here. So while I'm, I'm going up this way, you know, my only option was to attack this route. And Satis was up here. We kept thinking, we got to hit Agartha together. We have to team up on him. But when I own these provinces, Agartha owns these provinces, and Satis owns these, you know, Satis traveled through here. I couldn't attack in any way into Agartha with him. What I wanted to do was to go up through here and come up from the south of Agartha. But that would have required that I attack Pangea. I tried to broker a deal where I would I would take Man's capital and give him all the gems that uh, I can't remember what Man's produ Man produces. I think he gets some nature and earth. Maybe I was going to take the air, give the rest to Pangea, and that would have given me a route into Agartha from the south. But uh, obviously Pangea wasn't going to take that, which was a smart uh, play on his part. So, I mean, that's really it, guys. You know, I I, I didn't get that expansion that I wanted from the elephants. Uh, I, you know, in retrospect, I would have risked it and just attacked those, those uh, barbarians. I did not have any elephants at that time, or maybe I had two, I can't remember. But, you know, from an AI game perspective, I would not have taken that risk. From an, a multiplayer perspective, in retrospect, hindsight's 2020, I would have went for it. Because I think that turning back was worse than me getting crushed here and losing my starting expansion force. So that's kind of the take on the game um in general from my my perspective i i think that obviously i made a lot of rookie multiplayer mistakes i think that i should have just went straight south and attacked into pangea to be quite honest i i i played it soft i played it soft i told myself at the beginning i was going to be aggressive and, and go after somebody um and i don't know it would have been interesting to see what would have happened between Pangea and I over here. I feel like I did have enough to beat his army at man, but I don't think I had enough to reinforce it quicker than he could have. So I think that, you know, while I would have been traveling all the way from my capital, he would have been able to reinforce much quicker. So it probably would have been a wash between the two of us, and maybe we would have had a stalemate over here by this bridge or something to that effect. Um... And that reminds me of another big thing that hurt really bad was when I uh, had that Barbarian building a fort here and forgot to set up province defenses <laughs> and man sent their prophet scout in and killed him. That cost me well over a thousand gold. You know, it was a thousand or twelve hundred for the fort and then also the lost income from these three provinces because these two were cut off uh, and this one, you know, obviously went to man. So I lost all that income. That was that was pretty brutal. Uh, not to mention the fort turns and being able to, you know, build mages and things like that. But that's my take. I um, enjoyed the game. I wasn't crazy about how well I did. I wish I had been more aggressive, like I said. I think that... Um, I think I could have done a lot better if I had just attacked somebody towards the beginning of the game. And, you know, I don't know. That's my thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. Now, it like I said, it's July 31. It's well over a month since the game ended. The question now is whether people want to play another one. I, I've had a few people comment that they'd be interested in doing it. And I would also be interested in doing it. I don't know if I would film it for the, the um, channel. Unless there are people out there that really like this. Uh, please leave me a comment and let me know if you would like to see another multiplayer game on the channel. I'll be happy to do it. 
Um, it is a pain in the ass, guys, because, you know, I gotta, I gotta film every day. Normally when I do a Dominion's Let's Play series, I, I do three a week, so I got like a two-day buffer in there to kind of, and I do it at once, you know, an hour of, of playing and filming at the same time. This is like one turn a day, and I, you know, five or ten minutes, of, you know, of setup. So nothing to, nothing I can't deal with, but it is definitely a different, you know, it's, it's a whole different thing. Um, so yeah, that's the other thing is, is I, you know, I would like to, if I did do another one, try to shorten my turns. I, I was speaking for like five or 10 minutes at a time. And I think that was too much for one turn at a time, but let me know what your thoughts are, uh, about this whole series in general. Uh, it's been fun guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, a lot of comments, uh, you know, a lot of people talking, people who are more experienced than I am self-replicating whatnot, the Mary non player winning a great player. Obviously I knew he was a good, a good player as well. Um, Horrifying Thoughts and Agartha, very experienced player, Josie and Abyssia. And um, that's not to leave out Pangea, Ribby, and uh, I think it was DJ uh, playing TNCI, both doing very well. And I, I don't think very experienced. Let me know if, uh, if I'm wrong there, but you know, this was my first game. I think it may have been their first game. Um, not sure about TNCI, you know, may, maybe a, more of a quiet person on my channel, but uh, happy to have him in the game. and. Not really certain how experienced he was. Actually, there's Ashdod right there. I thought he was out. Um, looks like he is because of Dominion. But uh, that's it, guys. I'm going to wrap it up now. Thanks for watching once again. Leave me the comments below. And uh, we'll see if there's another one. Catch you next time, guys.